Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. tmaso at thewatchbox.com is in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please email me at tmaso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Rolex has a small class of elite pieces, generally high jewelry models that are introduced quietly, rarely advertised, and almost never show up in factory literature or on the website. This is an example of one of those. From 2021 forward, this Rolex Oyster Perpetual Sky Dweller 326259TBR has been offered to those who have the means to purchase it, but also the knowledge of the brand to ask. So this is a very quiet release that only a few folks are going to have. Even those who have the means to buy it may not even know it exists. It is a Sky Dweller. The series launched in 2012, an annual calendar GMT, and it's based on a white gold case format. So this is still 42 millimeters in diameter, 13.9 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip. The total distance across the wrist is 50.4 millimeters and then 22 millimeters between the lugs. We'll throw the watch on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you'll see that it wears quite nicely. This is a watch that is substantial, but nicely shaped so that the case flank, though not ultra thin, should fit underneath the cuff. Again, 13.9 millimeters with a sloped bezel. When you view it down the barrel, you can appreciate that the lugs do not extend over the edges of my wrist. And then when we look at it from over the top, you can see again that the lugs are slightly inboard of the edges of my wrist and I'm pulling the strap really tight to keep it secure. If you don't wear it super tight, it won't compress your wrist. This is actually exaggerating the width of the watch. Now taking a quick look at the strap, I should inform you, it's actually a bracelet. Though commonly described as a strap, Oyster Flex, which bowed in 2015 on the Yacht Masters, has a nickel titanium alloy band inside of it, so you can't cut it, it can't tear. The nickel titanium is super flexible, giving it the impression of being just a piece of rubber, but it is much more. That's why it's described by Rolex as a bracelet. You can see Oyster Flex is the true name, not a nickname. Fully integrated into the case band with two end links that are themselves paved with diamond. It has a very integrated look as well as little molded center spline to give it some definition. There's a bellows system that helps to ventilate the wrist on a hot day, creating an air pocket, but also providing a little bit of elasticity to hold the strap in place in case you're slightly between sizes. And that's important because you cannot cut the Oyster Flex, although several different sizes of the bracelet are available. The clasp is as elaborately decorated as the watch. You could see a combination of white gold and diamond paving. And I should mention that these gem set Rolex watches are the last truly handmade Rolex watches, as all of the gem setting at Rolex is done by manual means with hands and tools and flame. And in fact, the only automated part is the optical grating of the diamonds, so you can see that they have the same color and clarity. That's the only automated part. Everything else would be recognizable to a 19th century watchmaker or jeweler. So that's what we're dealing with here. It's a sophisticated clasp thick gauge white gold internally, and you can see Rolex uses gray gold, which is the type that never needs to be plated. And we have a little lift lock system with a spring-loaded articulation. You can see the beak and the hook. This actually latches shut. You can't just pull it open. You do need to lift to unlock it, so it's a fairly sophisticated system. Now, more about that gray gold. Rolex has its own foundry. It makes its cases, clasps, bracelets, it smelts its own gold. It uses what's known as gray gold, which is homogenous all the way through, so if you chip it or you nick it or there's a scratch, it's the same color underneath. It's a little bit more expensive than rhodium-plated white gold, but it's the good stuff. It's what you'll find on Rolex, JLC, Patek, Grubel Forsey. Taking a look at the case band. Diamond paved like the rest of the watch. The case is white gold underneath all of that ice, and you better post a lookout and reverse the engines because iceberg dead ahead. This watch is absolutely slammed with diamonds, and beautifully so. You can see that there is a visible setting system for the gems in profile and on the lugs, which means the little white gold pincers that hold the diamonds are visible, whereas on the bezel, we have baguette style rather than brilliant cut, and the baguettes are invisibly set, so you cannot see the white gold binding that holds them in place. We have an outer and an inner flange, and that acts to hold the diamonds secure. Also, take note of the edge of this bezel. It has a very subtle pyramid pattern or knurling to give it definition and a shape distinctive of this watch and unique to this model. You will not find that on a conventional Sky Dweller. We have a screw down 
twin lock crown and oyster case back, endowing the watch with 100 meters of water resistance. And you know this is a Rolex twin lock in gold because it has two symmetrical dots. Taking a look at the dial, meteorite, Widmann Staten pattern. So this is a piece of meteorite iron that has been oxidized and etched to create this crystal-like profile and then stabilized so it won't oxidize anymore and it will always look like this. And these are all by definition piece unique dials because no two will ever come out alike. The diamonds on the dial are baguette gems representing the individual hours as well as the months. And then the Rolex crown and the hands at center are white gold. The idea being to resist the oxidation and tarnish and discoloration of those components over time. We have Rolex Chromalite Blue Loom. It is present and correct, but there's very little loom on this watch, giving way to the high jewelry effect. This is a watch that features an annual calendar and a GMT. The GMT is fairly obvious. You can see that there is a 24-hour ring at center, and I'll show you how all of this works. The annual calendar is a bit more subtle. So when I screw the crown out, and it is a screw-down crown, in first position, I can wind the watch. By the way, it also automatic winds and has a 70-hour power reserve. Now I pull this crown out and it actually does nothing in the outermost position until I take the ring command bezel, which is part of caliber 9001, and I turn it one click. Okay, now you can see how I'm able to adjust the date forward and backwards. And so the date is represented in its little aperture under the Cyclops eye magnifier. And then the month, 12 hours, 12 months, is down inside a little window with a shifting red index. And notice that I can turn the calendar quick set in both directions. Also, that the watch is still keeping time. Now, I can move this calendar system in two directions, forward or back. I can move the date and I can move the month. And so you can appreciate that little jumping red index in the aperture that rings the dial. That is your month. So right now I am looking at the 1st of June. That is the sixth hour, the sixth month, and the first. Turn the bezel one more time counterclockwise. You can feel it hit a detent, and that's how you know you're there. Now I can adjust the local hour. I can move the date forward, but not backwards here. Also, take note, the watch is still ticking. Finally, turn the bezel all the way counterclockwise, the final stop. Now, you can see I've activated hacking or stop seconds. I can set that GMT, 24 hour time zone at center. That'd be the first thing that I would do. And then, I would set my local hour. And then I would set my calendar, just like that. That's how that works. A really slick system. And so you just make sure that the ring command is justified all the way clockwise before you go off on your merry way. Now inside the case, we have caliber 9001. Automatic winding, bi-directional winding action with a rotor bearing rather than Rolex's older jeweled staff designs. It has a 4 hertz beat rate, pivots on 40 joules. It is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer, but Rolex does more certifying the movement, then casing it up and testing it in six positions to make sure the watch runs no worse than plus or minus two seconds per day. The timepiece has a full balance bridge with a free sprung balance for shock tolerance. The overcoil hairspring is shaped by hand with a Breguet overcoil profile to allow it to keep excellent time in every position. That's a characteristic of an overcoil. The overcoil is also made of a blue oxidized niobium zirconium alloy that is extremely anti-magnetic all this water resistant down to 100 meters. It does have the bi-directional quick set system, the GMT, the annual calendar, and it is a Rolex manufacturer movement right down to the shock absorbers, Paraflex, and the very lubricants used. Rolex is a fully integrated manufacturer. So reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.